Uh, and thanks for inviting me uh, to the Vermont Arts Council. Um, I received a creation grant um, in 2007, uh, and with its help I finished my third book of poetry. Um, obviously the grant gave me a little bit of leeway. Uh, I was working in retail at the time, um, uh, and it let me work a little bit less so I could concentrate on finishing the book. Um, but it definitely it helped me in a more important way too. Uh, I've always thought that it was essential to have some sort of, uh, some sense of community in what is normally a solitary activity. You know, writers will be up in the attic banging away on their computer um, with only the sound of the keyboard to uh, keep the company, you know. Um, and having just moved here from New York City where I lived for 10 years, um, I have to admit, I, I felt some sense of trepidation, A, not knowing anybody, um, and B, um, well, most of the images in my poems uh, before I moved here had some sort of urban feel to it. Um, and I wasn't sure exactly how I was gonna fit in here. Um, so it meant a lot to me to become part of the Vermont arts community, um, to be in touch, to be put in touch with uh, other artists and other writers. It made me feel like I could be a part of this space. Um, and I really think that was the first step in uh, letting me integrate uh, the space into my work. I'm gonna read two poems. Um, uh, one of which, at least, will illustrate uh, that new uh, ur um, uh, rural space. Both were polished um, during the time of the grant. Uh, this first one is called Dark Was the Night. Uh, it's named after a blues song by uh, Blind Willie Johnson. Um, a little background, I guess. That song is somewhere up in space now. Um, it's on one of those gold discs on uh, uh, the space spacecraft Voyager, along with uh, all sorts of sounds from planet Earth. So, dark was the night. A moan dragged across gravel, the guitar's metallic complaint and shimmy. These sounds rattled the zodiac, wail the mute eruption and flare of a collapsing star. Dark was the night, cold was the ground, by blind Billy Johnson. Three minutes and 15 seconds of bruised spiritual is touring the cosmos alongside the Brandenburg Concerto and Johnny B. Good on the spacecraft Voyager. The music flanked by a slew of natural sounds, surf and thunder, crickets, a kiss, a heartbeat, an oral primer to planet Earth. The world is phonic. What's the matter? Blueberry, backhoe, the back of your hand, but the shards of that primeval sound when the universe detonated from the ghost of a pebble. Voyager, long past Pluto, <coughs> is 100,000 years from the next system. But here you are on Earth, and so it matters that when Johnson was seven, his stepmother, aiming for his father, cast lie into his face, the price for his father's infidelity. Blinded, he was resigned to a street corner, the dull rattle of tips cooling in a cup, a woman passing to another running catalog of bouquets, husk of sweat at first, then salt, then almonds, her, body, her body's continuous assertions grown hyperbolic. He could smell the moods, the delicate swerves evident as each nuance of skins hit and swell. He could smell the fur before it brushed his arm, before the woman backed away in a clatter of heels. Years later, he could smell the stench of soaked char in the ruined pit of his house. <clears throat> Turned away from the hospital after the fire had gutted his roof, he returned to a rain-soaked bed of newspaper and soot, and pneumonia killed him in the ashes, beneath a ceiling not of wood or plaster, but of stars. What are blues? with no human to hear. What's a kiss or a heartbeat to that grand sweep of interplanetary ash, but molecules bumping molecules? Stranger, unimaginable intergalactic pilgrim who's never even heard of a tongue. If you found this note curled in our million dollar can, hear the absurdity of our glory and our pain. Transmute it into we know not what, space dust, Star kindling, restore us back to sound.
the second one is shorter, and uh, <laughs> this one is, uh, uh, like I said, has a little bit more of a rural feel to it. Um, okay, it's called chicken. <laughs> at the harvest festival, I'm sorry, at the harvest festival, when we were celebrating with pumpkin tarts and cider, an older farmer asked what I was into, <laughs> and maybe my answer was, muff was muffled a bit from the cider's tang because he started talking passionately, not about his favorite poet or the use of weather in haiku, but about his chickens. <laughs> White leghorns, silky bantams, Rhode Island reds, buff Orpingtons. How in corporate agriculture, the birds are bred so big that their legs cripple beneath them, and isn't that a shame? I tried to break in to tell him he misheard but he shook his head and held up his finger. That's not the case with his birds. When his hens are laying, he puts oyster shells in their grit to give them extra calcium for their own shells. His birds are free range, not deep beat and stuffed two dozen to a pen. Freedom makes all the difference in the world. You can taste their happiness, he said. <laughs> Even see it. There are yolks, a rich, almost tangerine color, not pale like those you get at the grocery. And he was starting to get out of breath from excitement. And by this time, to tell the truth, I was just hoping he didn't ask about my birds. <laughs> because I don't know if I could have broken it to him. Poetry, I said, not poetry.